On September 11, 2001, 19 militants associated with the Islamic extremist group Al-Qaeda hijacked four airliners and carried out suicide attacks against targets in the United States. At 8.45 a.m. on a clear Tuesday morning, an American Airlines Boeing 767 loaded with 20,000 gallons of jet fuel crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. The impact left a gaping, burning hole near the 80th floor of the 110-story skyscraper, instantly killing hundreds of people and trapping hundreds more in higher floors. As the evacuation of the tower and its twin got underway, television cameras broadcasted live images of what initially appeared to be a freak accident. Then 18 minutes after the first plane hit, a second Boeing 767 United Airlines Flight 175 appeared out of the sky, turned sharply toward the World Trade Center, and sliced into the South Tower near the 60th floor. The collision caused a massive explosion that showered burning debris over surrounding buildings in the streets below. America was under attack. White House Chief of Staff Andy Card whispered the news into the ear of President George W. Bush, who was reading with school children at Emma E. Booker Elementary School in Sarasota, Florida. After meeting with advisors, the President found himself in the school library addressing a nation in shock. Today we've had a national tragedy. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country, the President said less than an hour after the attack. There were hours of pure panic and terror. For those who were running for safety, and for a nation watching on television, wondering what would come next. As millions watched the events unfolding in New York, American Airlines Flight 77 circled over downtown Washington, D.C., and slammed into the west side of the Pentagon military headquarters at 9.45 a.m. Jet fuel from the Boeing 757 caused a devastating inferno that led to the structural collapse of a portion of the giant concrete building. All told, 125 military personnel and civilians were killed in the Pentagon, along with all 64 people aboard the airliner. Then the unimaginable. Less than 15 minutes after the terrorists struck the nerve center of the U.S. military, the horror in New York took a catastrophic turn for the worse when the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed in a massive cloud of dust and smoke. The structural steel of the skyscraper, built to withstand winds in excess of 200 miles per hour and a large conventional fire, could not withstand the tremendous heat generated by the burning jet fuel. At 10.30 a.m., the other Trade Center tower collapsed. Close to 3,000 people died in the World Trade Center and its vicinity, including a staggering 343 firefighters and paramedics, 23 New York City police officers, and 37 Port Authority police officers who were struggling to complete an evacuation of the buildings and save the office workers trapped on higher floors. Only six people in the World Trade Center towers at the time of their collapse survived. Almost 10,000 others were treated for injuries, many severe. Two symbols of American pride, two of America's tallest buildings, gone before our eyes. And with them, thousands of innocent victims who had begun, begun to fill their offices for work that morning. Left in their places was a burial ground, a crime scene, a war zone. It became known as Ground Zero. Meanwhile, a fourth California-bound plane, United Flight 93, was hijacked about 40 minutes after leaving Newark International Airport in New Jersey. Because the plane had been delayed in taking off, passengers on board learned of events in New York and Washington via cell phone and air phone calls to the ground. Knowing that the aircraft was not returning to an airport as the hijackers claimed, a group of passengers and flight attendants planned an insurrection. The passengers fought the four hijackers and are suspected to have the, attacked the cockpit with a fire extinguisher. The plane then flipped over and sped toward the ground at upwards of 500 miles per hour, crashing into a rural field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania at 10.10 a.m. All 45 people aboard were killed. This intended target is not known, but theories include the White House and the U.S. Capitol. First responders were just beginning a huge task that would last through countless days and nights. The fire at Ground Zero would burn for another three months. But already by morning, a new reality had set in. America had just experienced its darkest day. Americans started to gather around Ground Zero with feelings of sadness and disbelief. 
Americans began to realize the destruction and the casualties that it had left behind. Americans had lost their loved ones. Parents had lost their children. Women had lost their husbands. Husbands had lost their wives. And children had lost their parents. The feeling of anger was overtaken by deep sadness. Firemen watched in disbelief as there was nothing that they could do. They felt helpless. The New York City first responders were named heroes for their selfless acts of bravery. Act, acts of patriotism were shown over the next several weeks. From Little League sporting events all the way to the majors and in many ways across the nation, America came together as one to show that we are united. We are America. We are one. Osama bin Laden was the man who orchestrated the attacks. He initially denied them but later admitted involvement. Arab Al Jazeera broadcast a statement by bin Laden on September 16, 2001, stating, I stress that I have not carried out this act, which appears to have been carried out by individuals with their own motivation. Shortly before the U.S. presidential election of 2004, in a taped statement, bin Laden publicly acknowledged al-Qaeda's involvement in the attacks on the U.S. and admitted his direct link to the attacks. He said that the attacks were carried out because we are free and want to regain freedom from our nation. Osama bin Laden's declaration of a holy war against the U.S. was Al-Qaeda's three motives for its activities against Western countries. The presence, presence of U.S. troops in Saudi Arabia, U.S. support of Israel, and sanctions against Iraq. After a nearly 10-year manhunt, bin Laden was killed by American Special Forces, SEAL Team 6, in a compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan on May 2nd. The attacks resulted in the death of 2,996 people, including the 19 hijackers and 2,977 victims. The destruction of the Twin Towers and other properties caused serious damage to the economy of Lower Manhattan and had a significant effect on global markets. Cleanup of the World Trade Center site was completed in May 2002 and the Pentagon was repaired within a year. Numerous memorials have been constructed, including the National September 11th Memorial and Museum in New York City, the Pentagon Memorial, and the Flight 93 National Memorial in Pennsylvania. After a lengthy delay, the 1,776-foot-tall One World Trade Center is expected to be completed at Ground Zero in New York City in 2013. America has survived, we have rebuilt, and we have united. And we will never forget September 11, 2001.